there. In this video, we are going to go ahead and apply what we learned about writing linear functions, writing linear equations um, to multiple choice questions where we are given a graph and then we have to choose the correct equation for that graph. So um, the simplest way that we can find the function or the equation of a specific graph is to find a point that is found solely on that graph. And if you place the coordinates of that point into the equation options, so into the equations that are given four choices, five, whatever it may be, um, then you should get equal values on both sides of the equation, or in other words, a true statement, something like seven equals seven or um, four equals four or something like that. Those are true statements that would indicate that that point is part of that equation or on that line represented by that equation. Whereas if you end up with something that is not true, like negative one equals six, that would tell us that that is not on that line or that point is not on that line represented by that equation. So um, if you choose a point where um, there's more than a single line that passes, then you would not be able to eliminate all of the options. So it can be helpful um, to pick a point where only one of the answer choices um, align. But we often don't know that if we're given the graph. So what we can do is we can pick one point, try it out on all of the options, and that can eliminate some of our answer choices. And if it doesn't eliminate all of them, then we keep going with that method. I do want to also point out, if you have an understanding of slope-intercept form, then we can use that y equals mx plus b. And we can actually just write the equation from the graph um, instead of using elimination um, directly using that process. It's really up to you and your comfort level of what you do and don't understand. So let's take a look at this one. I'm going to first talk about the method of plugging in points. Um, this can be especially helpful if you maybe don't have a firm foundation or firm understanding in what we went through in the previous section where we wrote equations from a graph. And then I will also talk once we go through and solve it this way, I will also quickly just reference um, that other option that will be a little bit quicker if you do understand um, how to write the equation from a graph without plugging points in to check your answer choices. So let's start by um, reading the directions. It says choose the correct equation for the following graph. So looking at this graph, I'm going to just pick a random point on the graph. I'm going to go ahead and pick the y-intercept, which is at 0, comma, negative 1. So my x value of this point is 0, and my y value of this point is negative 1. So if the um, answer choices over here are the correct equation, then they will correctly satisfy all of the points on this line. So any point you pick on this line, if you plug it into the correct equation, it will come out with a true statement like seven equals seven or um, four equals four or something like that. So let's take a look at choice A and we're going to go ahead and plug in the zero for X and negative one for Y and see what happens. So negative one equals one fourth times zero plus one. So when we have that, one-fourth times zero is zero. So this right here comes out to be zero. So we have zero plus one on the right side. So we get negative one equals one, which is not a true statement. And so we can actually cross out answer choice A. Then we do the same thing with answer choice B. So we set up negative one equals negative four times zero plus one. Again, just plugging in our X and our Y. So we have negative one equals zero plus one. Zero plus one is one. So negative one equals one, again, is not a true statement. So right now we've canceled out or eliminated two of our answer choices. Let's take a look at C. So looking at choice C, we have negative one equals four times zero minus one. So this, we end up with negative one equals zero minus one negative one equals negative one is a true statement. Now, that does not mean that C is definitely our answer because we could have other lines that also go through that point. We could have this line right here, for example, would go through that point. So the equation of that line would be satisfied by zero comma negative one. We need to find a second point um, that 
will also work on that same equation. And then that will um, determine which equation is correct. So before we go on to that second point, let's look at D because if we're lucky, then um, zero negative one won't work on D and we'd eliminate that. And then we would know that C is the correct answer without checking any additional points. So we see Y equals negative one fourth X minus one. And looking at that, we have um, negative one equals negative one fourth times zero minus one. So we have negative one equals zero minus one. Negative one therefore equals negative one, which is a true statement. So unfortunately that does not allow us to eliminate D. So we are now looking between C and D. Now, a couple things I wanna point out. Um, if you know your slope intercept form and how M and B affect the equation, you could answer it that way, which again, I'll talk about here in a second. But if we don't remember that piece of it as well, or we're not as comfortable with it, then we can go ahead and um, pick another point. It's just going to take a little bit more time like it's taken to plug these values in. So I'm going to pick a point again, I always suggest on a corner of a grid line. So I'm going to use one comma three so that I'm working with whole numbers. So that's going to be my new X and Y that I'm going to try out. So let's work with C choice C, we have three equals four times one minus one when we plug in one and three for X and Y. So we now have three equals four minus one. Three equals three is a true statement. So C should be our correct answer because there is only one line that can go through two points. So if I know that both of these points that are on this line on this graph satisfy this equation, that has to be the correct equation. And just to show you that, um, we can go ahead and quickly plug it in. And we see, just to again, prove that to you, three equals negative one fourth times one minus one. And that gives us three equals negative one fourth minus one. Negative one fourth minus one is going to be negative five fourths. And those are not equal. So that would allow us to eliminate choice D. So C is the correct answer. Now, like I said, this is the longer method, but if you don't understand your y equals mx plus b and how m and b work, this is a method that will work even without that underlying understanding. But let's go ahead and talk for a second if you do understand that. So let's take this away and let's look at y equals mx plus b. So if we have y equals mx plus b and we're given this equation, we can write the line, the equation of the line, and see if it matches, and it should if we do it correctly, but see if it matches one of these four over here. So y equals mx plus b, remember our m is our slope, and our b is our y-intercept. So I'm going to start by um, figuring out what m and b are. I notice here that b is negative one, and before I do anything else, I'm going to actually cross out some options over here. So if I know that b is negative one, I know that it needs to end in negative one. So this and this allow me to eliminate options A and B because those show y-intercepts of positive one, whereas C and D both have negative one. Now, the other thing I wanna point out, you actually don't need to calculate the slope on this one. You could, you could pick a second point and you could count, for example, up one, two, three, four, and then to the right one and we see that our slope is up four, right one, four over one, or just four, and then you'd be able to choose C. However, without even having to count, if you look at the line, the line has a positive slope. So even before you calculate or count the slope, if we know it is positive, look at the slope of the two answer choices we have left. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. So we can actually eliminate choice D because it's a negative slope and our graph does not have a negative slope. So C would be our correct answer. Again, this is needing or requiring no plugging in, no calculations other than just looking for the y-intercept. And on some of them, if it is um, written in a way where maybe you couldn't eliminate that last option, maybe they were both positive, for example, you would still just have to count the slope, the rise over the run, 
to find your answer as opposed to picking a point, plugging it in multiple times, picking another point, plugging it in. So there is a, definitely a benefit to understanding those underlying concepts. So in summary, um, choosing the correct equation from a gr given graph, we can plug in, that is an option, we can plug in points into the equations, um, or we could use M and B and write our equation in Y equals MX plus B format, that slope intercept form. So either way works. Um, this option over here is a little bit quicker if you understand it, but if you don't, that plugging in points option is there as well.